Hey guys, I'm here with a new video. This is from Darkscape and it is an update. It is experimental tweaks in game update posted the 15th of October by Mod William. This week's Darkscape update focuses on changes to one item PKing and summoning shops. These changes are experimental and we need your help and your thoughts in order to determine whether they're right for the game in the long term. Take a look through the changes below, see how they feel in game, and give us your thoughts over on Reddit and the forums. You'll also find the usual badge of tweaks and bug fixes below. One item changes. These changes are intended to reduce the effectiveness of one item PKing as a means of combat training while impacting other gameplay as little as possible. Dying while Scald with Protect Item enabled will trigger a 5 minute cooldown on Protect Item. Dying while not Scald will Protect Item enabled will trigger a 1 minute cooldown on Protect Item. Prayer Point Drain rate has been re increased. Shop Changes These changes are intended to resolve resource issues with particular shops. Summoning shops have been reverted to personal stock. Spirit shards are no longer given as a reward for the shooting star. Empty summoning pouches are no longer given as a reward from the Evil Tree D&D. Spirit shards remain unsellable to shops or the pet shop. The Shantae Pass, Betadine Camp, and Sophonim shops containing water skins have been reverted to personal stock. Water skins are no longer dropped by scorpions. Okay, moving down to bug fixes. Grand Exchange updates and login notifications now inform you which risk region your trades were completed in. Players should no longer get stuck in the wall crevice, agility shortcut in the dwarven mine. Father Urani no longer mentions the Lumbridge Crater. The Ruin Goldberg Machines interface now displays only the ruins you have access to. The Raptor now correctly appears in the players at the Deep Wilderness Dungeon when they teleport using Remora's necklace at the end of Song of the Depths. The trade interface no longer behaves as if the money pouch exists when checking space. As such, it should no longer drop items unnecessarily when confirming trades. Kale for Shaw, your ally in Legacy of Seagaze, Seer Gaze, no longer tries to PK you. The gnome glider that flies to Crash Island no longer requires cloth and planks as materials. The Sears Village task Alcoholic can be completed with the alchemy spell. The Death of Chivalry can now continue even if you're PK'd during the Owen Escort section. The task See You at 5 can now be completed. The bank interface now correctly scrolls to the bottom. Guards no longer turn when a player talks to them. Other forms of distraction are required. Gerderick's house and the nearby docks are low risk. Doors near the Lumbridge Grand Exchange are now always open. Player-owned homes, houses, servants have undergone rigorous training and will now be able to find items in your bank. Exiting the Queen Black Dragon's lair via the reward chamber will no longer place you in Remington. Enjoy and be sure to give us your feedback on today's changes, the Darkscape team. Well, thank God that they fixed that bank problem. I was having such a problem going in and searching and typing in what I want to find because I couldn't see it. Um, it's good that they're starting to fix these issues and bugs and whatnot. Uh, kudos on the one iteming, uh, shop changes, that's good too. So put your thoughts and comments below, give this video a like if you liked it, share it to your friends, your buddies, your Facebook, your whatever that you've got, and I'll see you guys in the next video.
Sam, have a great gaming day.